it's been such a long time since we're, we recorded. I don't really remember what my original. How do we even record? <laughs> Everyone, and welcome to Madoka Magicast. We're back, that's right, new episode. This is the podcast devoted to the Dark and Magical Girl anime franchise, Puella Magi Madoka Magica. I'm your host, Amanda, and I'm joined by my co host, Yasha and Vana. Hi! Hello! Hello, ladies! Your internet's working! It yeah! Is. Well, fingers crossed, let's do this. I hope so, anyway. Uh, I guess oh. we're gonna find out if it's not working any, like, again. It's been okay. <laughs> I've done a couple of movie streams, and I've done some recordings and such, like, like yesterday I finished off a, an episode with Panda, and it's been okay, but it is really disconcerting when your internet problem heals on its own and you don't know what caused it. Yeah, yeah. my next question was going to be, did you ever find out what the problem no. was? No. No, we had a guy come out here and everything, and he was like, it's fine. I'm like, no, it's not fucking fine. It's dropping at least twice an hour. This is not okay. And he's like, well, we can't do anything about that because you have third-party hardware. I'm like, well, oh. What? It was just so stressful. But it what does that even on mean? its own. Um, I used to work for them. Like, I used oh. to work for the, the cable provider. And see, we, we have a different cable provider that, like, rents space on their on their network Uh uh-huh so the the actual texts that come out come from shaw whereas i get my service and my modem and all that from a place called tech savvy right so shaw can't access tech savvy's records from their modem or like from our modem to tell what our uptime is or anything like that because they're different companies but it's shaw's network and i worked for them so i kind of know what's happening and i could freaking tell them what's happening but since i can't get at those records and tech savvy doesn't keep them the way shaw does i can't prove anything so what i'm what i'm hearing is that you have to deal with stupid bullshit with cable companies in canada too (laughs) oh Mm -hmm. oh yes it's nowhere near as bad it's 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 different shit like it's different right but it's still like comically evil and disgusting <laughs> i mean well it's corporations it's so not comcast obviously. levels of evil it's comcast if comcast was three different companies that were like handshaking each other while pretending to be enemies yeah cool love so it really yeah uh, yeah love it maybe they were just like Maybe you guys had like an especially long uh, stream one day and your ISP was just mm-hmm. like, can we just Cuts turn their off. internet off for like a couple months just to let mm-hmm. us like catch up on everything they're costing us and then just turn it back on later? Honestly, uh, the- I kind of just wonder if it was like a load situation <laughs> no, for a while the there. the technical term for what was happening is called flapping. It's when there's a loose connection somewhere along the line and what it does is it causes an inter- internet disruption. Like I said, I know exactly what's <laughs> happening, but they won't believe me because I don't have records to pull up. So it's, um, yeah. And it's Shaw's problem. It's not my mm. fucking problem. It's not Tech Savvy's problem. Yeah, we're going to try installing but. some software on the, on the, yeah, to try and keep track of our uptime. Yeah. But it, like I said, seems to have healed on its own. So it's like, maybe there was a stressed cool. connection that, that got shifted or something, yeah. and now it's okay again. Cat I don't know. kicked a cable, who knows? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Somebody wiggled the cable and, and wiggled it back right. in place and made it more secure, and now it's working better. That's exactly. pretty much exactly Thank what you, I Thank you, Cube. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like, you can... Seriously, you can cut all of that out if you want to. Like, my our, our internet problems are... Not very compelling. Stupid. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it did, like, freeze yeah. the show for, like, an extra month or two. Which, so, I know. Like, it's an and extra six sucks. weeks when we were supposed to be coming back. So, you know, I at, know. at least it's let everybody bullshit. know. It's not your fault. I mean, like... Everybody was actually pretty cool about it. Like we we didn't actually get it. Yeah, I saw, message. which I really That's appreciate. Good. Yeah, I'm really yeah, I'm really glad that everybody was understanding. Like, yeah, I, chill, chill fans. Yeah, thank you, everybody. How about you, Amanda? What's been going on recently? Uh, like not a whole lot, really. Uh, like nothing new since the last time me and Panda recorded our little 
Uh-huh. Sorry that we're not going to have any episodes for a while episode. Mm-hmm. I've just been going to work, coming home. I bought some oh. Halloween decorations for our front yard from Target, and they're very cute. Nice. Oh, our favorite time of the year. Yeah, it's it's that time of the year when I get to go sh- clothes shopping. <laughs> <laughs> seriously that's like when i buy the most clothes is halloween when everything goes on sale because they've got all the socks with like blood splatters and skeletons and things like that doesn't go to go to do their major clothing shopping the day after halloween (laughs) (laughs) just just run at that discounted stuff and stock up yeah pretty much it's already yours yeah i mean i'm happy that the weather is kind of starting to get cooler. To settle down. Just a teeny little tiny bit. It's, the dial got, got turned down just a tiny little one degree colder. Mm-hmm. So hopefully it'll That's got to be a relief in Florida. Yeah. Being as we went into Greek letters this year. Yeah. Still no direct hit hurricanes on us yet, but oh, uh, fingers a crossed. ridiculous amount of rain, which is annoying. No doubt. Mm-hmm. But, like, other than that kind of stuff, like, really nothing new going on with me. Like, I don't know. Sweet. I've just kind of I've just kind of been hanging out. I feel like, like, in this, this case, less is more. <laughs> yes. Honestly, I envy you. Yeah. <laughs> like, seriously. Yeah. That's good. I, I wish nothing was happening. More. We've got some, some weird guy writing 10,000 word fucking essays about how we suck right now, so that's a... That's always great. Oh, is that what's going on with with the Utena site right now? Yeah, the, yeah. You've got an angry guy. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Would you say that he that you guys are what the kids would say, uh, living rent free in his head right now? Oh yes, yes big yes, time. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I should. In fact, I, should I think we are being paid. <laughs> yeah, may we might maybe. Be, yeah, <laughs> we might be. We might be getting stipend this. actually. <laughs> But yeah, um, I'll link you the essay. It's fucking weird. I love that term, by the way. We should do a dramatic reading of it. We, uh, you man, know what? We, could. we definitely could. The whole like, living the rent free in my head is like extra. <laughs> it's one of those terms that I'm like, God, I wish I'd had that when I was a kid. Yeah. To describe yeah. my everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but definitely. It's kind of like like when we get yelled at for not doing magic. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as we're supposed to and it's kind of like what <laughs> i don't know it's just if anybody stumbles on this guy do not interact yeah, like it's he's, not he's just weird he's leave him alone it's it's creepy as hell actually mm. so uh i feel like the more that. we talk about him the more likely it is that people will go out and find him so let's just move Probably. on yeah yeah, so let, yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> exactly i don't know if i finished my intro or not but in in the odd chance that this is your first episode of the podcast you're listening to on this podcast we talk about <laughs> madoka magica and uh we sure do yeah what we love and don't love about it and we were covering the different story manga before we were forced to extend our hiatus and today we'll be Rudely returning interrupted. yeah today we'll be we will be returning to it with chapter seven of volume two wait yep. isn't chapter six Oh no no. We did ch- we did chapter 6, didn't we? We stopped when it looked like Mommy was going to die. Yeah, which was chapter 5. Oh, was it? Yeah. What was the last Cause, episode? Cuz chapter we did? 6 chapter 6 picks up with oh my god, is Mommy going to die and then it's like Yeah, the last the, time the we queens stopped it show looked... up and save everybody, but we hadn't yeah. gotten there oh, yet. Oh shit. Hold on. Okay. I didn't actually I thought maybe 8 was our second episode and I didn't actually get the time to outline it. In which case, that would be great. Yeah, uh, that's the, like, when I, I reread the manga this morning, and that's, I, I do not remember recording a chapter six. We did not record chapter six because we stopped. Because we stopped like when Mommy, Mommy was, was about die. to die because we were wondering kind of whether it was, how hard it was going to branch off from mm-hmm. the series canon. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, that's why, like, I because I woke up, like, when I got up this morning, I home this morning i was gonna write the next chapter if there wasn't already two but i saw the two so i was like well oop, oop, so okay well cool let's continue on right guess right yeah yes i'm sorry i actually like really love the stupid manga. yeah <laughs> love the wait love the what i'm enjoying this stupid manga i don't or, to be honest i don't usually like manga like it it's not usually a format that okay. works super great for yes. me, but boy, am I just devouring these. 
Yeah, I this manga is good. Mm-hmm. It's not bad. No, it is quite good. It feels like it should fall into that like really cheap cash in side story. Let's make some content to sell to people that liked the thing, but it does kind of like go off and do its own thing, and I enjoy it for that. Yeah, and like it, it's very consistent with the characterization overall, and like mm. it's an interesting what if story. It is. Yeah. I like uh like I feel like I'm already like ooh 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 and then like character does this which is consistent with their character from the series but kind of reflected in a different way and blah 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 so it's like it's good. Yes. I can say I've read to the end of this book, this volume. Mhm. And I have not read into volume 3. Very I haven't either. Very interested in seeing how volume 3 yes. starts off. Yes. I like deliberately didn't cuz yeah. I kind of want to see what my takes yeah. are blind I, it. yeah me too i wanted that different i wanted for us to cover the rest of this volume mm-hmm. before we got into volume three totally yeah. mm-hmm. okay so perhaps we should go on ahead and just get started then let's do it all right dear viewers if you do not remember where we left off because it has been a while, a while. we were fighting a witch with mommy and sayaka with marco looking onwards and Mommy got in a bind, and she needed help from Sayaka. And Sayaka kind of just had a little bit of a brain fart. <laughs> she she kind of froze up yep. and did not pull through when needed. And she kind of just froze up, I guess. Uh, she did not see the storm that was coming. No. And it looked like Mommy was about to die. But as we see in the first few pages of Chapter 6 here where we are starting off today. Mm-hmm. Mommy looks to be getting injured, maybe about to die, but she basically saves herself. So this kind of like net that gets thrown up, because it looks like right at the end there, like a net gets thrown up but that keeps Madoka away from, um, like between Sayaka and Mommy. Mm-hmm. Is that, am I supposed to assume that's Mommy that throws that up? Yeah, she... Yeah, there you go. She, yeah, yeah. She essentially throws up a, it looks like the same barrier that is protecting Madoka. She does a second Mm -hmm. one to protect Sayaka. Yeah. And then it looks like she was going to do a Tiro finale at the witch, but then it Mm -hmm. looks like she just explodes the big Tiro finale gun. Yeah. And and like injures herself. Yeah, like there's tendrils around the gun yeah. and it looks like like it backfires or something yeah. into the barrel and yeah. kaplow. Exactly. So she get she manages to escape the tendrils, but she uh doesn't look to be doing too well. No, she's she's got all bloody stomach. Yeah. Anime syndrome. And then it does the thing where her barrier fades away. From in front of Madoka. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which isn't a good sign. No. No. I actually like that that it does that, like, before she dies. Yeah. Like, it being a concentration issue. I think that's... Because that's not how it's used in the series, so it's definitely, like, a big... Oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. Yeah, but exactly. Not how they're actually going to use it here. So, uh, Sayaka's like, holy shit, what just happened? And then she's kind of coming out of it. Like, uh... Yeah. Oh, wait. Fuck. I gotta do this. <laughs> <laughs> Kyube thinks he might be able to take advantage of this mm-hmm. by by getting Madoka to make a contract. He so he's sure like, what? "Wait, this I need fu- you this to fucking contract guy. Now. This I know. fucking guy. Seriously. Every opportunity he has. Seriously, <laughs> so he's like cheap. a frat boy trying to get laid. It Seriously, really, yeah, <laughs> like it really is. Like he's just so cheap. Yeah, about it. <laughs> Seriously." But Madoka does not have to contract. No, because, because you see the little uh, shield click, and you're like, "Oh, yeah." yeah. It Deuce X Homura arrived. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Homura lands on scene like, haha. So does that mean time has stopped? Because seeing the shield there made me think that the maybe that she Homura time stopped in and time stopped and is yelling at everyone, but in paused time. <laughs> <laughs> Which it it does look perhaps like that might have mm-hmm. happened because on the next page, right after the shield. Mm-hmm panel we see one of her hand bombs yeah and, and like then, a big boom and the witch essentially explodes and is immediately killed mm-hmm. <laughs> like the witch is just gone after that <laughs> it's so OP. <laughs> <laughs> that's just ludicrous i can't even get mad i mean why is an anime character within an anime i yep. mean yeah like <laughs> 
Like, within the world of this anime, people go, wow, she's like an anime character. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fair, I guess. She is really OP. Extremely over the top. She just, she just like, nukes this, uh, this witch immediately. And uh, Kyoko's with her? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Homura asks Sayaka a bunch about how is she going to abandon Mommy, or is mm-hmm. she going to abandon the witch, or... You've got one you yeah. can deal with. Pick one. Which is kind of weird because now, like, Kyoko and and Homura are just standing there and she's like, make a decision when you, you, you don't need to now. You could just split the labor and deal with both issues. Yeah, pretty much. Well, <laughs> just to st- take a step mm-hmm. back, weren't there... Mm-hmm. Weren't there two witches in this labyrinth? Yes. Yeah, that's... so I think there's still a second witch, I think is what's happening. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of, like, hard, like, the action shots are some kind, sometimes kind of hard to differentiate yeah. what's going on in, so it's kind of hard to tell that there's actually two witches. Yeah. I'm not yeah. really a visual person, so I kind of have trouble reading the action hmm. scenes and, like, knowing what's happened in there, because to me it just looks like a bunch of blobs and explosions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the like what like what happened was there was like a witch living inside the other witch's yeah ward or something, something like, like that. that. So, but like hmm. when when this idea. artist does the action scenes, I kind of find it hard to follow. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, that's why I like the dialogue scenes a lot better. I think they're a lot. Mm-hmm. They're really where the writer shines as far as staging and stuff. Yeah, definitely. But um, yeah, so now that there's. The witch is defeated. They're just kind of standing there. Yeah. I mean, Homer is asking Sayaka if mm-hmm. she's going to go Which after gonna the do? other witch or if she's going to take care of mommy or if she's just going to run the fuck away. Which is apparently yeah. Sayaka's inclination yeah. is to just run the fuck away. Which, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like, I feel like I should say I kind of don't blame her, but I do blame her. <laughs> it's like, seriously, you're going to leave a friend lying there bleeding because you're having, like, a crisis of personality or something yeah i I don't even understand why she's really Mm -hmm. being like this right now she's like sunk cost fallacy with her moral integrity she did something she thinks is a little bad and now she feels like she's obligated to just exactly she's very she's very all or nothing yeah like it's very rigid it's very binary with her everything is very black and white yes So, like, she did, and you guys will recall, and listeners hopefully will recall from the last episode, because it's been a while, there was an implied moment here where Sayaka was horrified to learn that Hitomi got attacked by a witch, Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that there was, the manga kind of hints that that might have had something to do with this, because Mm -hmm. she was being very moody when she found out, and like, so, and we find out that that's gonna start, that's gonna play into what's going on with her. So, like, she is kind of being just, like... Conflict. She's being very navel gazy. Yes, right which is funny, yeah. given she's the one with the, like, bare navel. <laughs> <laughs> she's the only one that can actually do that, and she's taking advantage of it. Yeah. But it's kind of funny, because for all of her very, like, polar thinking, Homer shows up and is like, no, 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 do more polar thinking, because it's very, like... She's framing it as you have to pick one of these things or the other because if you do either of them half-assed while the other's in mind, you're going to fail. Which I don't think is wrong. I think she's got a good point, but it's also like of all of the people on Earth you need to be telling to think more rigidly. (laughs) Sayaka is probably not the one. Well, like at the same time, Sayaka is like kind of an indecisive person, even though she is very black and white, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. Like, even though her thinking is that way, she doesn't make decisions. She's not, like... No. Yeah. She's not someone who acts and, like, takes charge. No. Yeah. Like, there is a part of her who... I think she knows what she should do to, like, adhere to her own extremely rigid morality mm-hmm. code. And then there's what she wants to do mm-hmm. as as a practical thing because she's afraid you know and Mm -hmm. because there's those two things pulling on her she just doesn't do anything (laughs) yes yeah and i think because she is so internally motivated like you know all of her navel gazing and all of her conflicts tend to be from within like she's only asking herself and no one else and i feel like that kind of contributes like like the implication being that a more decisive person is a person that would have sought out the input of others and kind of put that into their decision making process whereas it's easy to just start spinning in circles inside your head and not 
mm-hmm. choosing anything when you're considering yourself the main decider of a course of action. It's very right. Shinji, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's kind of Shinji's arc over the course of Evangelion, where he has to start taking other people into account, and it makes him more and more decisive as he goes. Yeah. Yeah. Because... Because it's actually, it's almost like it's actually easier to see what the right thing to do is when you're looking at Well, yeah, at what when you've got a bunch of other to. people to, like, basically right. narrow, narrow your decisions yeah. down, then you don't have that decision paralysis anymore because yeah. your options are limited. Right. She, she needed a Masato. Hmm. So, like, at this point, um, they it looks like uh, Kyoko kind of decides for Sayaka here and yes. says, you know, you want her to die or what? Get shit or get off the pot? Which is... Big Kyoko energy. She said, uh, Kyoko decides she's going to deal, uh, her and Homer are going to deal with the witch for now, and that Sayaka needs to go deal with Mommy, and it's because this is how her healing power is being framed. Yes. So, Which I actually think is a really cool change. This is cool. So Sayaka actually gets to, like, do something unique that only yes. she can do. Yeah. She can heal others, which is, like, yeah. really cool. Yeah. So she sends, uh, so Saika sends her to, to take care of mommy. And she's like, she's got like her sword over her and it's very ritualistic and cool looking, but Mm -hmm. it also has like that like circular, uh, music note. So it's almost like she's doing an attack. Like, yeah, it's got her, how she, she, um, some of her powers and her moves involve like these circular concentric rings that then have like musical notes on them. Yeah. So it kind of looks like uh, sheet music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and which I also think is cool because it kind of looks like water ripples. Yeah, like, the way it's animated. Yeah, so it it has that like around mommy while she's mm-hmm. healing her. Yeah, I actually really like it. It's more of a literal reading of what her skill set would be because she's able to heal others. Yeah, but it also kind of positions her as hmm. I always feel like there's always a sense of like the moral integrity of the of the healer being implicitly right so it kind of makes her seem more i don't know like hmm i'm trying to figure out how to articulate that Mm -hmm. i always i always associate like in any like battle group the healer is the good person yeah yeah Yeah. so like it makes her seem like she means better than like i don't know i feel like it frames her in a more positive light because she's able to heal like Mm -hmm. that seems to me like an implicit coding that shows up in this sort of thing a lot yeah, I can agree with that. Sayaka mm-hmm. is a white mage who really, yes. really wants to be the fighter and doesn't realize <laughs> that she's a terrible fighter. Yes, you can't and expect for She's both. really much better as the white mage. <laughs> and, like, it's actually, that's kind of neat to think, like, if her power is really more in healing than it is attacking, I think that's interesting given she's also the one that's not a ranged fighter. Yeah. Like, like she's the one with the sword because you have to approach somebody to heal them. Right. Which I just think it's kind of neat because it looks like she's prepared to be the melee, but it's not actually what her best, mm-hmm. the best utilization of her skill set is. Right. And yeah, that, that definitely kind of comes into conflict with how she views the world because, you know, in her mind, doing the right thing would be defeating the enemy. And she didn't quite think of it more in the sense of doing the right thing would be healing people instead. Mm-hmm. So she's kind of coming into conflict with what she thinks the right thing looks like and what the right thing actually would look like. Yeah. And that's built right into her skill sets and what she's able to do and mm-hmm. and things like that, which makes the witch part sad. But Yeah. You know. Also, Luna decided to to sit up in my lap and lick my face while you were saying all of that. So. Aww, that's adorable. Aww, Baby. Thank you, Luna. Thank we are you. being sat on by a Tweety. Mm, the pets are being cute right now. They are. <laughs> so, yeah. She heals Mommy. Kyoko takes out the witch. Very quickly. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. like pretty much dispatches it like, <laughs> very, very quickly. Kind of like kind of OP, but that's okay. Well, you know, Kyoko knows what she's doing. She does. And the witch is gone. Situation has been resolved. It looks like Mommy has not died. She might just be, like, unconscious. But uh, Madoka, Sayaka, Kyoko, Homura, Mommy have left the labyrinth. Mm -hmm. And um, they're all just standing there dazed. Mm -hmm. And Kyoko grabs Sayaka's front collar and just starts yelling at her, like, (laughs) the fuck are you doing, idiot? (laughs) (laughs) Hmm. I mean, you know, you're not taking this seriously. You you can't fight alone. And if you're going to fight by yourself, it's not the same as fighting 
uh, as a team. Mm -hmm. Basically just starts chewing her out. And Sayaka does not want to hear this criticism from Kyoko. Does not take any of it to heart. And of course does her, I don't need to hear that from you kind of thing. (laughs) Where who it is that's saying it is her excuse for not wanting to listen to it. Yeah. It's not surprising that that's the conflict because like <laughs> Kyoko is so deeply pragmatic about all of this. So when Kyoko shows up and is like, "Hey, don't die over this." It's definitely not foreshadowing at this point that that Sayak is like, "I don't need to hear that from you." When what we know by now is that it's because Sayak wants to this kind she kind of wants to die. Like mm-hmm. yeah. she's already starting to think like in terms of, oh, well, if, if, if I killed me. Oh, I, I can't do this perfectly. I can't be a perfect person and do this. Well, then I, I don't want to do it then. Then, yeah, I'm not going to yeah. do anything at all. I don't is... feel like I deserve to do it then. Nope. Which is kind yeah. of mommy energy in the manga. That's something I feel like Sayaka and mommy have in common. Because they're both, like, like cripple it. Like, they cripple themselves with their fatalist kind of... Like, mm-hmm. no, it's either perfect and perfect i'm either the perfect senpai and or i'm an utter failure or i'm i'm the perfect warrior or i'm an utter failure mm-hmm. and there's no middle ground whereas kyoko's just like fuck witches get money <laughs> well like, you know. mom the difference is that mommy can is capable of living with herself as an imperfect person as long as she just ignores mm-hmm. ignores it you know yeah exactly yeah <laughs> She's got a better yeah. coping mechanism than yeah. a Saga, which isn't saying much. I'll just pretend that I'm not imperfect, or I'll just hide it from everyone else and let people think that I'm, I have it under control. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. it's fine. And, uh, We're fine. You know, that'll be my solution. Gee, that's mm-hmm. not relatable. <laughs> <laughs> so Kyoko, you know, just throws her back to the floor and storms off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Screw this. Mommy wakes up, says thank you. Mommy's going to be okay, though. Yeah, she's alive. She's alive. Sayaka seems very glad for that, but also, you know, the evidence survived, I guess. Sad. Yeah. <laughs> There's like a grief seat in the foreground and they're all like hugging in the background. It's very like big symbolism energy as the grief seat looms over them. But yeah. at that point, the scene kind of like breaks off as everyone scatters off and you like like cut to... Mommy walking around in an absolutely adorable dress. I I do think this dress. Yeah, is it is really extremely cute. cute. Her outfit is very cute. Yeah, it's like a turtleneck with a dress over it with these little like poofy sleeves, and it's exactly what mommy would wear. <laughs> it's so cute. It's so mommy. Her and Saya and uh, and Kyoko end up meeting, and of course Kyoko's got an apple because I I think she lives and breathes on apples. Homer ended up splitting up the grief seats. Like, there was like, oh, uh, you know, you can have this one. I don't need it. Uh, mm-hmm. Kyoko takes it. She uses it. And she thinks mommy is approaching her because she wants the grief seed, which naturally uh, Kyoko has already used because I suspect that she's that kind of grief seed addict. Mm-hmm. It just goes through her supply very quickly. <laughs> yeah. It's all of that using it to shoplift, all of her magic to shoplift burns through it really quick i think yeah but mommy is not here for the grief seed nope um this is a different situation from the last time they talked where they were not being friendly this is much more civil yeah instead mommy is here to offer her cookies (laughs) i baked you cookies girl i made cookies it's fine okay italian mother mommy (laughs) i I baked you some apology cookies Uh, what do you think are they pignole Maybe. It might be Pignoli. <laughs> it's just so, like, I'm sorry, here's food, and I'm like... Yeah. Well, also, we've been watching The Sopranos a lot, so... That is, yeah, that does yeah. not help. This is <laughs> big mob wife energy, mommy. Thanks. Kyoko <laughs> accepts the apology cookies, by she the way. She does. She's totally she does. eating them. <laughs> and these two finally have, like, a actual, like, honest discussion. I wouldn't call it a heart-to-heart, necessarily. Nah, Yeah. But it's actually a conversation that isn't them just trying to hurt each other and be catty. Mm-hmm. So that's good. That's progress, it's a start. right? <laughs> They're yeah. doing well. Mommy's asking, "Why would you have teamed up with uh, Homura?" And and then she says she's worried about <laughs> about Kyoko because she's not getting enough nutrition for her from her all of her junk food diet, and that's 
you, you just handed this girl a pile of cookies and you're telling her that you're concerned for her diet. Yeah. Like. Irony. <laughs> mommy, why didn't you bring her some, some vegetable stir fry or. <laughs> yeah. Well, but mommy only fiber. makes like cake and cookies and Well, like that. listen, mommy <laughs> didn't necessarily know whether Kyoko was going to talk to her. So she had to That's bribe fair. her with some cookies to start off with. That is, that is very mm-hmm. fair. Mm-hmm. She yeah. wasn't sure Kyoko was ready for, you know, apology fiber and protein but uh she she kind of complained like it's like nutritional balance is essential and kyoko just looks like gobsmacked because what the fuck (laughs) that is kind of funny to me and she she like literally goes keep that up and your intestines won't be the only thing to go and i'm like isn't 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 mommy like something like 15 and she's like concerned with the she's, with the bowel integrity of her yeah friend. yeah she, she's warning kyoko like, about the dangers like are you of a grandmother cancer. yeah like yeah. like this is this is odd big grandma energy but it, it totally raises an excuse to talk to her like yeah she's totally just using oh i'm worried about your diet as a reason to to talk to her mm-hmm. uh not realizing how weird and controlling that is in the way that you would criticize coming from a parent yeah which this is, this might be where I start bitching about mommy. So. <laughs> yeah, because you said you were mad at mommy. I'm I'm mad at mommy. <laughs> is this is does that come in later or is is this uh, kind of this is where, where this is kind of where it starts? Okay, let's uh, get into that then. Go for it. Why are you mad at mommy? Uh, we'll kind of get to it, but it's just a a. What is it at this point? At this point, it's it's the kind of thing where I'm like, this is why mommy had to die in the series. Hmm. You had to take away this this parental figure for the magical girls because yeah. while there's parents active in the series they're not parenting them you know in the framework of the magical girl life yeah. that they're leading yeah so they can't offer any guidance there yeah or as mommy is there and present in this and utterly not great at providing that herself and i think it's because she she's, she's selfish like she wants to be a good person and i'm not going to say she's not a good person but she's so invested in that experience of being a good person that she doesn't actually listen to the feedback other people offer her. And she doesn't listen to what they're saying to her. It's very, you know, I need to talk to you about, you know, our broken friendship. So I'm going to use the excuse of being worried about your bowels. You know, I'm, yeah, your, your colon. I'm worried about your colon, Kyoko. That's how I'm, I'm going to approach all my friends that way from now on. Yeah, it's 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 very bad parent energy. I, mm-hmm. I, I'm i going to disagree with you because mm-hmm. on the very next page, like on this exact same page, she's mm-hmm. like, okay, well, I will guess I'll get to the point. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> she, she, like she realizes she's being full <laughs> and like is like, all right, fine. Hey, maybe that's why she was asking about colon health is to signify that she's full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> i think i think this is her just stu- i like i can i guess if we if we go through this i like point it out more to me but mm-hmm. i think in this yeah, specific scene yeah in this specific scene i do kind of see this a little bit more as mommy trying to express some gratitude to kyoko for basically being the reason that she isn't dead it totally is it and, totally is and the two of them not being good at having normal conversations anymore and like we were just talking about this being their first conversation where they aren't just trying to cut each other down (laughs) it's true like they are at least trying to be civil which is good but i just i just find it interesting that you know she approaches a situation where she intends to have a heart to heart with an i'm worried about you thing which is very she's so attached to that mothering role that she has to establish it when this would probably have been much more effective if she'd approached it as, like, something else. Mm-hmm. As, like, wanting information from Kyoko well, instead of saying, providing information to Kyoko about a concern she has. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like yeah, when, yeah. when you approach people to break ice with them and talk to them, usually the best thing to do to break the ice isn't, I have a concern about you. That's usually... Like, it just comes off as very, um, it places you above the other person. And that's something mommy literally can't help doing because she wants that mothering role and that does place her above 
the people around her. And she's so like desperate to maintain that role that she doesn't realize that they're peers to her. Don't you think Kyoko does still see herself as being beneath mommy though? Definitely. Like that's part of why it's sad is that I think Kyoko accepts this like really quickly because she does still think that way. And I think so do the other magical girls. Yeah, I mean, I guess for me, I see exactly what you're talking about. I guess I mm-hmm. just don't think mommy's necessarily being an asshole for doing that. No, no, no. I don't I think she's being an asshole. I just kind of see her being mommy being mommy. Yeah. It's yeah. not an asshole thing. It's just, it's not an asshole. It's the, this is the person I wouldn't get along with. So I'm like, <laughs> Listen, <laughs> mommy's bitchy. trying her best. She's, she is absolutely trying. She probably has been legitimately worried about Kyoko. Even oh, though they haven't been getting along. Like, oh my God, my friend, you know, we don't get along now and I'm kind of pissed at her for not, you know, not wanting to kill familiars, mm-hmm. but it's not like I want her to starve to death. Mm-hmm. I-, I wonder how she's been doing on nutrition. You know, like that probably has been a thing that's occurred to her a couple of times. I kind of wonder if <laughs> this conversation, like, like two and three days before this conversation, mommy baked several dozen cookies trying mm-hmm. to fu- like... Like, like that was her test run. Like, you know, people will, like, have the test run conversation in front of the mirror. Yeah. Except yeah. mommy did this with, like, cookies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so there's been, like, three or four dozen batches of cookies where she's been like, okay, this is the, the I'm going to fix everything and set it right cookies. And then she's like, no, this one's got a little bit of a bad edge. And chucks the whole thing out and has to start over so she can delay the moment again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sh- that sounds like what mommy does to me. Yeah. yeah. She's like, no, no, these, these cookies have to be perfect. And that's how she kind of delays the moment and has her, her time to think. But once she, she kind of gets past yeah. that that pretense, it's very, uh, are you deter- Are you never going to team up with me again? Are we not yeah. friends? Yeah. Mm-hmm. She, so she's like, she's trying to, she's tr- trying to extend an olive branch. She's come with these cookies. She's asking about her health. She's at her nutrition. Mm-hmm. She tries to thank her for saving her. And then Kyoko is immediately like, Hey, uh, it wasn't me. So you, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> thank Sayaka for that. I didn't save you. And then mommy's like, okay, well, I guess I'll get to the point then. Cause, <laughs> cause it's like, all right, you don't want me to, you're not interested in hearing me say thank you. So I guess I'll just ask Move you on. what I came here to th- talk about. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But so I, I don't know. I, I feel like mommy tried. She tried. It's, yeah. it's cute because she tried, but they do not speak the same language here no, at all. No, they don't. They're just, missing each other by mile it's so cute. yeah so mommy's like D- are do you really intend to not mm-hmm. reconcile with me ever and like not team up with me ever again because and she's like because i i really don't see you or homura as evil like did she think they thought she thought that they were evil <laughs> wait what how do i entangle that sentence? <laughs> <laughs> like i don't really think of you two as evil makes me think that at some point Mommy thought they were evil and had yeah. to, like, change her their mind. Well, I mean, at least she considered it. She did. I guess you do have to consider it. She she does rob Well, stores. Mommy is still the kind of person who doesn't want to fight with magical girls if she doesn't have to. Oh, definitely. Mm-hmm. She's just become a little bit more wise and is willing mm-hmm. to if she has to. Mm-hmm. So I think Mommy is just, like, revealing a little bit of her old vulnerability here to Kyoko and being mm-hmm. honest about, like... I do know you guys are not evil. Right. You know, like, <laughs> like that kind of thing. It's, yeah. Yeah. And which, which implicitly, like, to her, you have to have that sort of value judgment to think of somebody else as the enemy. Like, she's yeah. so against the magical girls fighting with each other because it makes no sense to her. Why would people who are all theoretically on the same side fight? Mm-hmm. And it's very, it's that very, like, hopeful hippie liberal mentality that it's kind of like, aw, mm-hmm. but also... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but she she concedes that she's seen that Kyoko's gotten much stronger uh and she doesn't recognize her. And like it's the kind of thing where it turns out that she's sort of talking about their like Kyoko's fighting style, but you know symbolically she's also talking about her disposition as well. Yeah. Cuz you know Venn diagram of your personality and your fighting style. Mm-hmm. She does know that Kyoko is using a completely different fighting style. And frames it as you're trying to make up for the powers you lost, which arguably she 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 didn't try. She rocked that shit. Cause she's yeah, and like... and mommy straight up calls her out now. Of yeah. Like, like by the way, I noticed that you lost powers. Yeah. Why did you never come and talk to me about that? I could have helped mm-hmm. you with that. 
if you didn't want to burden anybody, you could have still talked to me about it. Mm -hmm. Like, why did you take on something as big as that all by yourself? And mm -hmm. this basically ruins the, whatever good good uh, moment they could have been having here. Yeah, cookies over. Yeah, Kyoko says, if I had gone to you for help, what would that have changed? Would we have suddenly gone back to agreeing about our strategy on how to hunt mm -hmm. witches? No. So, all right, this is, I guess, where I start getting mad at. This is this is the thing that kind of irritated me. So Kyoko's like, tell me, you know, if I had gone to you for help, would, would you have stopped hunting familiars? Would we have been buddy-buddy? And she go and she says, you turn to me, your crappy ally who can't even use magic and share your grief sees without so much as a nasty look, wouldn't you? That's the side of you that pisses me off the most. And I'm like, nods. <laughs> 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 because that is like exactly how I felt. Like that's she, well, like, it's, uh, it feels condescending. It's condescending. Yeah. But she's right. Mummy mm -hmm. absolutely would have done that. Mm -hmm. If Kyoko right. had been, like, almost totally powerless and limping through each battle and completely sucking, Mommy would quietly have had a nice smile on her face and just shared all of her resources with her and acted like it was no big deal. And she would have done it because she wants to be a good person, but her being a good person is running up against the sense of value and agency that Kyoko wants for herself. And that's Mommy's weakness, is that her desire to be good senpai and be good mom and be good helper runs up against letting other people make their own decisions their own way. And she doesn't really try to work with people much on that. She has her standards that she holds everybody to. And Kyoko is calling her out on that and saying that, you know, I, I think it's disgusting that you would accept that and you do it with a smile on your face and never take into account that that bothered me. Right. Mm -hmm. Which I think is interesting. Mm -hmm. So, like, what's interesting about this with Mommy is that she came here to confront Kyoko about her magic, mm -hmm. hoping and thinking that that was the real reason that she left Mitakihara. Yes. And Kyoko gets offended because she's immediately like, no dumb fuck. It's because I legitimately didn't want to keep fighting with you anymore. And we don't work together. We don't work together <laughs> as a team. And, you know, it had nothing to do with that. So I think that's. <sighs> Kyoko, you... do some communicating. Mommy yeah. just. <laughs> mommy is still just very sad that Kyoko left her. Yes. Yeah. She, she really is still very sad about that. Mm -hmm. She's not. She's not over Kyoko. Not at all. She ain't not even. Her. Yeah. And Kyoko is like, you sure love to stick your nose where it doesn't belong, but since yeah. you're here anyway, let's all just pour our tea out. <laughs> Which is, you know, big Kyoko hours, I guess. So Kyoko, I think, like, whatever whatever Mommy said here obviously struck enough of a nerve that Kyoko feels like she has to fight back in the conversation. Mm -hmm. So she does by going, hey, that fight I showed up for sucked. <laughs> By the way, you your new girlfriend, she ugly. <laughs> ugly. She's a dumb bitch. Uh, yeah. The two of you look do not do not look cute together. Your outfits you match guys terribly. Are, you are not going to last the year. <laughs> and your breakup's going to be ugly. I can tell you right now. It's going to be stink ugly. And you're going to be yeah. unhappy. Uh, that's basically what Kyoko says here. This is big ex-girlfriend energy. <laughs> Kyoko is such a petty queen. I love her. <laughs> this is just cheap. It's just cheap. Like you know, this is a conversation Kyoko wasn't gonna have, but no. this is like she, she has to wants... lash out. Now Kyoko's being the asshole. Now Kyoko oh, is totally. just saying this. She's just saying this just to be mean and just. Oh, absolutely. Mean. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it was so awful. I couldn't bear to watch. And and then she uh she's like for the for the tuition fee of a grief seed, I taught your little chicky the basics, which I kind of feel like yeah. Because why did Kyoko have to tell Sayaka that Sayaka could heal? Yeah. Like, I think that's interesting that Mommy didn't figure that one out on her own or tell Sayaka that already. But in the framework I mean, of this working as an... Know. Yeah. But in the framework of this working as an argument... Sayaka had never had an instance of needing to heal somebody up until that Exactly. Point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I feel like she does have a point, but she has a point in the sense that the plot contrived to give her a point because... Mommy yeah. would certainly have figured this one out on her own without Kyoko, but... 
Yeah. And, it just happened to be Kyoko yeah. that had the conversation first. I mean, but Kyoko's using that to her advantage. Yeah, and she's using it to, like, bludgeon Mommy at this point. And, oh, and um, then she she keeps going. Oh, she keeps going, yeah. Because she's like, uh, why do you have to go and let her make a contract in the first place? You know, uh-huh. you knew what she was going to do. You, you uh-huh. knew that she was going to make a wish just like I did. And now she's going to betray you just like me. And uh-huh. and so she just she's just twisting that knife as hard as she can. Oh my god! Yeah, it's the, the I hope she betrays you just like I yeah. do. So like like lightning bolts behind you, angry yeah. girlfriend energy. It's mm-hmm. so like she's also uh in this though uh, Kyoko is also connecting the idea that they would betray mommy with the fact that their wishes were made for other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because she gets into that whole you knew what Sayaka's wish was going to be and we know from previous conversations that Kyoko's big like thorn in her side is that she thinks that it's terrible and dumb and misled to make your wishes for other people. Mm-hmm. Which obviously she has no reason to think at all. Hmm. I think she does kind of have a chip on her shoulder still a little bit about uh, totally. mommy kind of Kyoko having with a chip her reservations. On her shoulder? My goodness. She's got I an entire Lay's China like factory on her shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> about mommy having her reservations ahead of time about mm-hmm. Kyoko's wish uh-huh. being for somebody else. Like I think yeah. I think that that really doesn't sit well with Kyoko because I think a part of her knows that mommy has been right about that the, the entire time. I think so. You know. So but that does kind of lend credence to what she's saying here to to mommy now. Like, mm-hmm. like uh, you knew that she was thinking of making that wish, and you didn't say something. Yep. Although, did Mommy no- have any idea what Sayako's wish was going to be? Um. Well, Kyoko seems to think so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think the manga really says one way or another. So you're supposed to assume that Kyoko knows something you don't. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. I think I think it's the presumption is being made that Mommy probably knew what the wish was because Mommy was talking to Sayaka before she became a magical yeah. girl. Or, and Sayaka's like yeah. an open book that way. So Or like at least should have like given them some pro tips yeah. ahead of time about what kind of wishes might be a good idea or not. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but she's you know. she's basically telling mommy, you didn't do that, did you? Because it meant more to you that you got another magical girlfriend. Right. Mm-hmm. So you were okay with her making a wish that you knew was a bad idea because you wanted her allyship for yourself and that makes you a bad person. And I, mean, and she I don't even think, has a point. She has a point, but I don't think she thinks she has a point. That's fair. Yeah. Like I think the audience thinks she has a point and Kyoko is just stabbing wildly because she's angry. And happened to hit a point. Yeah. But would have happily done this without having a point either. Yeah. To any extent that Kyoko has a point, it's not like it's... mommy consciously was like, oh, and then I know what I'll do. I'll not give them any advice on, yeah. on what on what kind of wishes <laughs> to make so that she makes a terrible wish and then she's stuck with me forever. Like, yeah. like it's it's definitely it ain't one of that those calculated. More, yeah, it's not calculated. And again, Kyoko's phrasing this and attacking her. As making if it, it were. sound like you evil bitch did this on or, purpose, didn't you? And, <laughs> this and, is some forty evil no, supervillain yeah. chess. No, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, after Kyoko has said all this, M- mommy's like, "Okay, well, never mind then. Sorry mm-hmm. for not, la- you know, sorry for not thinking about your true feelings and wasting mm-hmm. your time. Please go back to your own territory. Bye." And then she just walks away, and then immediately Kyoko like seems to regret everything that she has just said. Okay, so this page um, also pisses me off about Mommy because I've done this, <laughs> so I know how full of shit this is. <laughs> I've done this many times. Uh-oh. Uh, this is This is the passive-aggressive Italian woman special right here. <laughs> I've lost the argument, so I'm going to concede the argument so hugely and flamboyantly and self-sacrificingly that you feel bad bitch Mm -hmm. like okay so the dialogue is look that's uh, a power move let's leave it at that it's useless it's my own fault thinking these useless thoughts i acted stubbornly without taking your feelings into account i apologize for wasting so much of your time you still have your own territory don't you you should leave as quickly as possible Mm -hmm. 
I'm 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 so sorry uh that that I misunderstood what you wanted. I I this that was really no minute but the whole thing is feel bad. Mhm. Feel bad. Yeah. You should feel bad because I'm conceding this argument so browbeatenly and terribly. Don't you feel bad? And I'm like mad because I'm like okay, I I do that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I do that and people rightfully hate me for it. <laughs> I'm going to have to disagree with you. I don't think that's what's meant in the text, but it's yeah. totally reading that way oh, to me. Oh, and I'm just you're <laughs> if you're doing a bit, okay, then yes, absolutely. I agree with you 100%. <laughs> like, I don't think that's what's intended yeah. here, but yeah. that's totally but. how it reads. <laughs> that's, you know, because we're dealing with a passive aggressive Italian woman here, she's going to read it the passive aggressive Italian way. <laughs> yeah, this, this is like Livia Soprano crap. <laughs> Poor me. Yeah. Poor me. Okay. Well, but I don't think that they meant it that way, but it's totally how it reads. In, in, I think in this case, it is literally like, I feel really bad that this didn't work out, but I don't quite understand why it didn't work out. So I'm going to seed the entire argument and say I was wrong and we should just part ways now because I'm not going to figure it out if we keep communicating. Mm -hmm. I think is kind of more what's going on. Yeah. There. What annoys me is mm -hmm. Kyoko just immediately regretting everything <laughs> that she has just said. Yes. This is the kind of shit that makes me want to reach into a, a, the TV or into a book and just punch a character repeatedly <laughs> for never learning a goddamn thing about just, interacting just with other people. Yes. It's like shaker. <laughs> like, you learned nothing. God damn it's it, like, Kyoko. How many times is mommy, the two of you are, are trying to communicate with each other, honestly. How many times is mommy going to attempt... To, to like extend an olive, olive branch and be nice to you. And, <laughs> and you're going to shit it somebody, all up. Somebody somewhere says something wrong because human communication is imperfect and you lose your temper and do this shit and mommy <laughs> leaves and you make this exact face that you're making. Yes, the exact face and you go, <laughs> oh, hell. <laughs> like, how many times are you going to do this shit? And you know what's genius? There's a clock over her. Because yes. she's like standing on the street and there's a clock over her in the background and it's literally like, oh, it's that hour of the day. <laughs> Is it Tuesday? <laughs> I fucked up and now I just realized I fucked up. It's Tuesday. Like, it's just, it's a very good, like, visual juxtaposition of how it's, it's just time for Kyoko to shit the bed. <laughs> Congrats. Uh. Which, I mean... Yeah, because her instinct whenever she's cornered like this is to just lash out aggressively and try to hurt people. Mm -hmm. And then she regrets it after. that That's abuser behavior, Kyoko. Yeah. That's yeah. not great. I wonder where you learned that behavior, yeah, Kyoko. She, she, she does not have good, <laughs> she did not learn good conflict resolution skills. No. No. <laughs> no. No, no, no. It's it's our it's that moment in our podcast where we fucking hate her father for a moment. Yep. I'm just saying oh, it's oh, that time oh, again. Fuck that dad, asshole. Uh, you know, reminder that Kyoko's dad is a fucking horrible person who is really to yes. blame for all of this. Absolutely. I'm yep. putting all of this on her uh, dad. Yeah, all of this is actually Kyoko's dad's fault. So we actually, will now commence the four minutes of hate. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> None of them hate. have ever done anything wrong in their entire life. Except mm. have hurt him as a dad. That yeah. was a mistake. And Kyoko's like, dad is really the person that we should be slinging all of our incense mm -hmm. at. Yeah. Yep. Well, like, the fact that she does this so reliably and so well is literally like, oh, yeah, that's a learned behavior. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, great. Any sort of threat to your, your stability, you react by lashing out at the other person's weaknesses, whether or not they're related to the issue at hand. Yep. In fact, especially if they're not related to the issue at hand, let's just bring up some entirely other thing and nitpick it and make this person feel bad for no fucking reason except that that makes you feel like you want something and... Wow, I can't imagine how often this happens to her. And mm. frankly, I feel like it's literally like the only thing Kyoko is do isn't doing is hitting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a learned pattern of emotion, it, but it's abuse. a learned pattern, and it's a predictable one. And it's mm -hmm. like <sighs> it's Poor her Kyoko. It's her dad's fault. It's her dad's fault. Yeah, it's her dad. It is literally Fuck her him. dad's fault. Yeah. Uh, hashtag her. Kyoko's dad is the worst. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yubei is actually the hero mm -hmm. of the story. No, in relation I'm not gonna to go her that dad. I'm not in relation to her dad. 
No, he's just another version of her dad. Slightly less emotionally abusive, way more exploitive. Fair. Her dad isn't yeah. exploitive at all because yeah. he's just, he just. He's just abusive. <sighs> Yeah, he's yeah. just abusive. Like, yeah. he's not well planned out enough to be yeah. able to He doesn't anything. exploit Kyoko. He's just no. abusive. Yeah. He's just no, abusive. but what I'm saying yeah. is they're just two sides of the same mm-hmm. coin where yeah. her dad is abusive and Kyube is exploitive. Mm-hmm. So It's the same kind of not respecting someone as a, their own individual. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And, and the hating on Kyoko's dad hours is also kind of like... On one hand, I want to shake the shit out of Kyoko for this. And on the other hand, it's also like, God, I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I get it. Like, yeah, I know. like when you yeah. don't know how to deal with conflict and you don't know how to deal with feeling called out, I get why you react this way. And it's mm-hmm. sad because it is literally just a learned skill you don't have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't know how to deal with being, you know, corrected or getting feedback or having to think about your decisions or anything, so you react violently, and I'm like, baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. No, and no one's going to teach her at this point. Nope. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, Mommy sure doesn't know that skill, because Mommy does, like, the equal opposite extreme of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, she's just the needle buried in the much better but opposite direction, but she's absolutely unequipped to understand why Kyoko is acting this way. Which yeah. I think is, like, they're just seeing right past each other by, mm-hmm. like, miles. It's yeah. kind of sad, because I feel like it's, just, just talk, but they just try, and it went exactly the way we thought it would. Uh, <laughs> yep. And you're like, ah, sad trombone. Yeah, so we, that marks... The end of our four minutes of hate. Well, no, we <laughs> move on now to kind of, mm-hmm. like, the beginning of the next big Storyline. Yeah. Mm. So... The next day at school, we're we're at uh, Mitaki Hara Middle. Mm-hmm. We, Sayaka and Madoka are showing up for school, and mm-hmm. um, you know Sayaka's clearly not really in a good mood here. Mm-hmm. And uh, Sayaka gives Homura a look, and she says she tells her thank you for protecting Madoka and mommy. Mm-hmm. And um, Madoka tries to get Sayaka's attention, but she kind of gives her the cold shoulder and turns around and leaves. Because she's, there's this zoom in on Hitomi and Kyosuke, and implicitly here, it's kind of the Kyosuke plot is mm-hmm. coming at us at full speed now. Yep. Right. Which means good things are not going to happen with this, because they don't. Uh, the uh, next page we see that Madoka's getting concerned about Sayaka, and she gives Mommy a call, and uh, <laughs> kind of explains to her what's going on with mm-hmm. Kyosuke and the whole situation with Sayaka. Mm-hmm. And she asks Mommy to to, to keep it a secret that she told her about it. Yeah. And um and that, you know, she tells her Sayaka still thinks that it's her that it's her fault that you got hurt, even though like it kind of was. But, you mm-hmm. know, she's still yeah. blaming herself for all of that. She's still upset about all of that. Mm-hmm. And Madoka asks Mommy, you know, Will you please not hate Sayaka for that and he please be nice to her and forgive her and Oh and my god, Madoka baby. She, yeah. Yeah. Madoka's so, so sweet. sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's just such a little angel. And m- mommy does. is is does the big sister thing and says, Of course, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. of course I'm gonna I'll keep her safe and we'll keep fighting, so don't worry. Mm-hmm. And you know, and she she promises to herself that she's not going to let Kyoko's threat happen mm-hmm. of her betraying her. And, right and she time. she very forebodingly says, "I won't allow the past to repeat itself like that again, ever." <laughs> which means, like, uh, which means of the course, exact opposite. It's is definitely going to happen. Gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> yep. definitely going to happen. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's coming from a teenager, especially. That's like a herald of war. Yeah. Yep. Like, like oh boy. Yep. There is a, a chapter's almost over. There's just a, a couple mm-hmm. quick little scenes here. Yeah, it's like kind of the wrap-up scenes. Yeah. We see that it looks like Sayaka is wandering around at night maybe hunting witches. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Kyoko tracks her down and tells her to stop uh, hunting with Mommy. So the exact Mm -hmm. opposite of what Madoka just asked (laughs) Mommy to do. Kyoko tells Sayaka to stop witch hunting with Mommy. And she's like, you know, no matter what you do, you'll never be as good as she is. Like, uh, wow, Kyoko. (laughs) Yeah. And Sayaka's like, yeah, I guess you're right. (laughs) <laughs> Which I don't think is what Kyoko was expecting her to say. Yeah. I don't think she was trying to pick a fight. 
<laughs> yep, yep. That's that's like that's actually how you defeat that boss. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. The screaming, angry, aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> you know kyoko's dad you beat that boss by just going yeah you're right yeah, well and thanks. then and then sayak is like by the way i heard all about you from mommy you were her first apprentice weren't you mm-hmm. so so now sayak is like got her own knife to twist here yeah yeah <laughs> own <laughs> it was a reverse own Oops. yeah those are rare so sayak is like i think you match match her much better than i do so it looks like that part of Sayaka's thing here is that she thinks that that Kyoko and Mommy are doing the thing where they wouldn't fight familiars, mm-hmm. which is not how Mommy chooses to do things, but it's how she thinks Kyoko and Mommy would be doing things, is that they would be doing, like, the Kyoko strategy of letting familiars hurt people, which is, of course, mm-hmm. not kosher to Sayaka, so she says you abandon the people of the town for your own self. I wonder reasons, if that is a translation right. error. Do you think? Because uh, that like, would... Is it you guys, or is she is in Japanese? She really just saying, you know, you, you abandon people. You abandon people for your reasons. I don't agree with that, but I don't have a right to yeah. criticize it. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah you're that right. Does kinda seem it does like kind of make more sense if it's targeted specifically at Kyoko. Mm-hmm. But she does go, "Oh, I don't have the right to judge because I'm or maybe, actually the maybe evils. she's talking about Kyoko and Homura." Oh yes. Yeah, oh true. yes. They've definitely established yeah. that they do it the dirty way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, yeah, right. I think yes. that's it. Okay. She's she's calling out Homura. Well, and she well. says, you know, I don't have a right to criticize either. And she walks away. And mm-hmm. and Kyoko's like, what does she mean by that? Like, what's up with her? And we see at the next day at school, Sayaka has called mommy up to the roof of the school because she wants to con- like confess something to her. Mm-hmm. And mommy thinks that she's going to try apologizing again for hurting getting hurt but that's not what it's about this <laughs> rooftop is extremely foreboding yes. every time we see it something nothing bad good is happens. happening yeah. okay rooftop this is, is gonna sound good. this is gonna sound weird but and this is certainly not something i can confirm as a legitimate reading because i'm looking at it from a western point of view mm-hmm. but in the media i have consumed Mm-hmm. The trope of people jumping off the top of the buildings, mm-hmm. combined with the, all of the major emotional conflicts in the show, especially keep happening at the top of the building on the roof. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's like kind of a like a sense of like this is where you go to resolve the dark things. Almost mm-hmm. like I feel like there's just sort of a coding there that mm-hmm. you're that yeah, that's kind of just that. where shit goes down. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and even within yeah. you know Madoka because that woman tries to jump off the top of a bill of a roof like yeah like a rooftop things like that mm-hmm. so i feel like there's this like the roof, kind of sense rooftop that if you're is going where sayaka to the rooftop, does her contract sh- yeah mm-hmm. sh- yeah yeah shit yeah. goes down on the roof that's where you go for yeah your yeah. serious kind of stuff so mommy thinks that she's gonna apologize again so she's like it's over don't worry about it anymore and and sayaka's is like no 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 you don't know Hold no, on. no, no, I my friend. To, I need to fess up, I guess. I'm not um, here for that. I'm here to say I want to quit as partners. <laughs> I want to break up. <laughs> we should see other magical girls. I yep. want to do the thing that you did not ever want to hear me say. Yep. <laughs> yep. And and she says that the reason that this kind of went all to shit isn't because of anything else, but that... Sayaka already knew Hitomi had been under the influence of a witch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like dot dot dot. Yeah. That he, he's like, you know that friend of mine, Hitomi, that you saved with Madoka mm-hmm. on that night when I wasn't there? Yeah, well, I knew about that when it I happened. I knew about that. I actually knew that she was under the influence of a witch. Yeah. Explicitly and, didn't show up. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and um that's the end of the chapter. Yeah, we do not actually see mommy's reaction to that whole thought. Mm. Like, you see, like, her beginning to hear it, like, already knew. And, like, it's like a shocked face from Mommy, and Saika's got this kind of, like, sad, embarrassed face, but you don't see the resolution of it. Mm. Like, it just kind of cuts Yeah, at the scene. Yeah. So you're not really sure exactly what Mommy takes from that, which I kind of... I think storytelling wise, this is better as a dramatic arc, but I'm like super curious what came after this in this conversation. Yeah. yeah. Because like, this challenges a lot of the up? problems mommy has mm-hmm. about how she thinks of the moral high ground and what her values are and mm-hmm. and things like that. So I would have liked to see what process, you know, mommy went through in trying to make peace with or understand this. 
Because I think this would have been alien enough to her that she's like, holy shit, I don't even know. Yeah. I can't even make the value judgment. I haven't thought about this enough before. Yeah. Right. So I kind of wonder where this puts mommy in like a a moral integrity sense, but we don't find out, which I think is better in like a dramatic arc way. Well, mm-hmm. we might find out in a Later. in a more roundabout way very soon. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I I love where the direction this goes in. Um, yes. Mm-hmm. But we're going to have to find out more about that next time. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. that's the chapter. Yes. That is the chapter. <laughs> so <laughs> um, to end chapter. I'm excited to get into this because I kind of know the direction that this is going in. Yeah. Yeah. I like how they changed up like different aspects of the, the, the plot. Like I like yeah. that you end up having Saya could disclose this to mommy, mm-hmm. who is definitely the person who would be most affected by it. Right. In a in a sense of like, whoa. Yeah. Whereas like Maruka, I think, would be like, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> Cause she's a sweet baby angel and understands everybody. Yeah. 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 Whereas mommy, I think, would struggle a little bit more with something like this because as because, you know, even just a few pages previously, Kyoko is trying to call mommy out for being the kind of person whose selfish interest in having the people she wants close to her conflicts with whether it's a good thing to actually encourage these magical girls to take contracts Mm -hmm. and kyoko is like stabbing in the dark and happens to hit a nerve there Mm -hmm. but now it's that conflict coming down to bear in a very different way because it's the same issue and now mommy's like oh oh shit yeah so i do think that there's an interesting kind of like they play with mommy being present in the story and it being not necessarily a good thing that she's there Mm -hmm. like yeah because in the show, it's almost, like, posited that it, like, it's almost like, oh, if Mommy had survived, this would have gone a lot better because they they lost Senpai yeah, and shit went to Yeah, the inclination is to think that if she had survived, yeah. then things would yeah. be, have e- been easier. But this I, is telling I do you, like, no. That. <laughs> no, yeah, because I, she's, she's got this history with Kyoko. Yep. Mm-hmm. She's trying to be this role model to Sayaka. And as we can see, this it's causing a lot of trouble here. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I like that what if mommy survived isn't exactly a, it's kind of a mixed bag. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, but that's kind of what what the audience should have expected in a way. Like, yeah, like I'm like enjoying the, it. The, that's what makes it I interesting. Mean, yeah. Like, I like the the whole playing with that expectation because as Vanna said, yeah, everybody probably was of the opinion that things would go better, but then having it go not necessarily better and be a mixed bag and be a lot of trouble is kind of it it kind of gives me that feeling of like yeah we should have expected this yeah we We, should have we we shouldn't have we shouldn't have expected things to go better because this is this is madoka so and i mean and the anime does actually make this point as well just Mm -hmm. in a much briefer sort of way because like in the sequences where you see the previous timelines and yeah. you see, like, mommy lose her shit and kill all the magical girls. Yes. And you're like, yeah, that tracks. Yep. That would be yeah. mommy. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. yeah. So even in the anime, it does recognize that mommy isn't necessarily the safe senpai that, that she, she wants sells to herself be. as. Yeah. But this is a much more, like, drawn out, like, see, this is how much of a mess she makes. Yeah. Not, you know, meaning ill, but it's it's kind of fun to see just how it changes the equation, but doesn't really improve it. <laughs> Yeah, like it's still a mess. They're <laughs> still just, you know, crazy teenagers wandering in the dark and smashing into walls. Mm-hmm. And Kyubei is still Kyubei is much less present actually in the thank manga, goodness, which is which I think is good. Less is more with him. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, like like stand back Kyubei and just let let us watch what plays out with these characters. Like we yeah. really mm-hmm. don't need you in this story. Nope. Yeah. The yeah. conflict is all motivated by the girls themselves yeah. on their own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like in this show, you get much more of a sense of Kyubei is nudging them and Kyubei is an influence yeah, and, 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 and like uh, manipulating them and things. Yeah. Kyubei could, could literally be a plush toy and these girls would be tying themselves into knots, knots on yeah. their own. Like, well, yeah. yeah. And that's it's because fun. that's because the TV anime is the story of how Homer's time loop stops. Yes. And Kyubei mm-hmm. has more of a role to play in that story. Yes. You know, yeah. They're, this is a different story. Yeah, this is a different story. Yeah, different exactly. Story. <laughs> the different story, lowercase d in this. Yeah. Okay, so thank you everybody for listening. Uh, we Let's go ahead and cut it off there. We'll actually be under yeah. an hour and a half for once. 
What? Woo! Amazing. I know. Thanks for listening, everybody. I hope that you are looking forward to our next episode to see, to find out where all this is going. I know that we are. If you would like to follow the show on social media, you can do so at Madoka Magicast on Twitter and on Tumblr and pretty much every social media site. We're going to be <laughs> Madoka Magicast. So pick your social media site of choice and try to find us there. If we're not there, then mm-hmm. we're not there. We don't have anything yeah. on that site. Yeah. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so at Lambda Power. That is my uh, personal Twitter and Odd Lazdo, which is my art Twitter. Mm-hmm. And if you want to find me and Vana anywhere on the net, we are always at O-H-T-O-R-I dot N-U. And should you want to see our horrible shit posts, they're on Twitter at O-H-T-O-R-I underscore N-U. Yes. Very exciting. Yes. I, I, All right. I, the content mm-hmm. has been good. <laughs> the content has been plentiful. We're, we're all just we're all just posting content in this bitch of a world right now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> we're all fighting our own witches. Yeah. All right. All right. So thanks for listening, and we will see everybody next time. Bye. Bye, Bye friends. <laughs>